Previously, we had 15 laptops per classroom accessing the internet without any problem. Now we had 30. And we thought it wouldn't matter because they're iPads. Well, iPads, laptops, iPhones, they're all hitting the internet at the same time. So we realized we had to update our wireless ports to the latest generation. By doing so, it allowed all 30 kids to access the internet without getting bumped off. If you stay logged into the iTunes store, kids can use your school district login and use it to iMessage everybody. The problem is that when they use that login, everybody that has their iPad open gets that same text. So we spent the first day or two trying to get them all logged off. We have had very few lost iPads. We've had kids leave them on the lunch tables, but our kids have been very, very honest in returning them. Part of the reason is because all of them have their own, so they need to keep it for themselves. Now we have had some damage, but considering the number of kids we had versus the number of damaged iPads, the rate is very low. It was much lower than what we expected. We gave them um, options for insurance, and we advised them to purchase insurance, though that was not a requirement. There is no way you can be able to do any type of technology initiative like this without expecting some damage to some devices. But as long as people know up front that the responsibility falls upon them, they will do the best they can to take care of them, and when they don't, they assume full responsibility without any type of complaint or arguing. Do the kids use the iPads in the classroom to access sites they shouldn't be accessing? Well, obviously schools have filters to block that. But even with filters, kids can sometimes be going on to ESPN. That's not blocked. Instead of paying attention to a school lecture. Or instead of being on Edmodo, they may be on GaggleNet accessing their account. How do we go ahead and keep kids on task? And the answer to, in my mind, is the same answer we gave teachers before we had technology. It all comes down to your classroom management. And as long as a teacher is involved in the classroom and walking around, we really don't have a whole lot of problems with kids being off task. Some of the problem is that actually kids want to use the iPad for everything as far as education goes. And sometimes it's still important to take pencil to paper and handwrite an essay. And so we do sometimes have to get kids, no, you can't type it, you got to write it out. But once that little hiccup was taken care of, things went very smoothly. The kids were able to use the iPads in their classrooms very effectively. And it started right away. One reason why it was so successful initially was because we decided to put iPads in every teacher's hands for a year and let them play with them. Let them see what they could do in the classroom. They saw how they could definitely help on the productivity side as far as classroom management and grades. But more importantly, they began to experiment with them on how they can be used in the curriculum. The kids their learning curve was much shorter because they're, they're natural technology natives. They know exactly how to use them, and many of them already had iPads in some cases. So there was clearly no growth period really needed as far as getting the kids adapted to the iPads in their classrooms. Our biggest problem now is just making sure the kids bring them charged. And that's something that's going to just take practice and make, make it become part of the culture. 